Here's what, here's how I think we should do this. Solice ut eude se sawere. Because they did not have roots. No roots. So, solice for thamthe sum sixty feldne sum thritti feldne. Kind of incomprehensible to one that's more or less comprehensible. Hi everyone, if you're watching this on YouTube, welcome to the channel. My name is Colin Gorey. This is a channel all about language, linguistics, uh, learning languages, making up languages. Uh, today, we have a little bit of Old English for you. So this is the third in the series of our graded reader of easy Old English texts that I'm going to be over explaining to you. I'm going to go through and I'm going to make sure you get all of the grammar and vocabulary uh, and then hopefully that'll turn this into from a, a text that's kind of incomprehensible to one that's more or less comprehensible. Uh, so that's the idea here. And so we are going to jump in to the other view. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I think it's up. Okay. Let's take a look-see. So we have here... A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the first two readings, if you haven't seen them uh, yet, I would say go check them out first because we have, uh, if you're watching this in the future on YouTube, that is, go check them out first because we'll introduce some of the vocabulary um, in those earlier readings. Um, but this one is also from the Gospel of Matthew. And I'm here's, what, here's how I think we should do this. I'm going to read it through first, then we'll dissect it, we'll go line by line, explain everything, and then I'll come back and read it. And hopefully you'll see the difference between the two readings. In the first reading, um, it may be, you know, fairly thorny, hard to understand. And hopefully after we've gone through it all, and I'll give it, you know, I'll try and be suitably dramatic in my reading the second time around, hopefully you'll be able to get the meaning uh, a bit more so at least. All right, so time for the reading. Solice ut eude se sawere, he said to sawene. On tha tha heseu, sume he fell on with way. An fuglas cumon and aton tha, tha. Excuse me. Solice sume fell on on stanichte, thar hit nav de michle erdan. An radlice up sprungon, for thom the he navdon erdan dupan. Solice up sprung in resunnan, hi adruedon and for, uh, for shrunkon, for thom the hi navdon virtruman. Solice sume felon on thornas, an tha thornas weoxon, and for, <laughs> for thrismodon tha. Sume solice felon on gode erdan, an seldon wasten, sum hund feldne, sum sixty feldne, Sum thritti feldne. Okay. That fourth, fourth, this, this word here, I'm gonna, this is a tongue twister for me. For, for thrismodon, for thrismodon. All right. Have to, have to do some workouts in front of the mirror for that one later. All right. So let's go through this uh, line by line. So this is the, the parable of the sower, uh, if you're familiar with that. And if you're not, you will be soon. All right, so the first line. Sodlice ut eude se sawere, his sad to sawene. Sodlice, we have seen before in the earlier readings, but if you haven't seen those videos yet, it's, um, it's an adverb that can mean a lot of different things. Um, truly, indeed, um, it can be used uh, as amen as well. Um, but uh, here I've translated it as now. Um, it's a very, very multifunction uh, adverb. So, so the liche, now, ut, ut is the ancestor of out. With the, after the great vowel shift, we get these long oos going to ow in modern English. So, so the liche, ut, um, now, out, eode. Eode is, the, it's an irregular past tense, just like in modern English we have the verb to go, which has an irregular past tense, went. In Old English, we have uh, the verb gone, which means to go, and it had an irregular past tense as well. Although, in this case, it is eode. So, solice ut eode se sawere. Se sawere, the sower. Sawere comes from the, uh, the verb sawan. Um, 
which is to sow as in sow seeds. And yes, this is Old English. Um, this dates back, this is the, the English as it was spoken over a thousand years ago, um, maybe roughly a thousand to fourteen hundred years ago. Um, so, sodlice ut eode se sawere, now out went the sower, his sad to sawene, his seed to sow. Uh, sad, by the way, could be seed or seeds. It's the same in the singular and plural in this case. Um, so I think you could you could make a case for either. I've translated here as his seeds to sow or to sow his seeds. Um, let's move this down a little bit so you can see a touch more. There we go. Um, Tosawenne. This is an interesting uh, construction here. This is what is called the inflected infinitive. And so this is the first time we have seen the inflected infinitive in the case of in the course of our graded readings. Um, it's used, so the, the non-inflected infinitive is sawan. This is what we have here, to sow. Um, the inflected infinitive is used to in these constructions like to sawenne, in order to sow. So it expresses purpose. That's one of its, uh, its uses here. So the whole sentence, putting it all together, we have sodlice ut eode se sawere his sad to, uh, to sawenne. So now out went the sower to sow his seeds. All right, let's go to the next sentence. Uh, there we go. Let's get some precision on this scrolling. On tha tha heseu, sumehi felon with way. Uh, the translation, and when he sowed, some of them fell along the road. Um, word by word, and, this is and, um, not, too, not too difficult there. Uh, the next one though is something that, uh, that might look a little bit, that might look a little bit different. Tha tha, um, this is when. So and tha tha, and when, he sew, uh, he sew, he sew, he sewed. So in modern English, we have a lot of these verbs, which we think of as regular verbs, regular as opposed to irregular. Um, where you take the, you make the past tense just by adding an ed. I sow my seeds, I sowed my seeds. We also have uh, irregular verbs, like the verb to see. I see you, I saw you. Right? We, change, uh, we change the verb a little bit more drastically in those cases. These two types of verbs date back a long, long way, including to the Old English period and beyond. Um, and they uh, they are called weak verbs, which are the things that we now call regular verbs in English in present day English, uh, and strong verbs. Uh, these verbs that that cha that exp that um, give us their past tense by by a more radical change, not just adding this this um, ancestor of the ed ending. Uh, but what's interesting is that in Old English, more verbs fell into this strong category: strong, strong verbs, irregular. Um, category than now do. So now we have this verb to sow, which is a, a regular verb in modern English, but it was a it was not in uh, Old English, it was a strong verb. So that's why we have sow, sow in, um, as the past tense of sawan. So we have a vowel change. That's really the, the hallmark of these strong verbs. Um, and tha tha he sow, and when he sowed. Okay, what happened when he sowed? Sumehi, Feolon with way. So some, sume is, is the ancestor of some. Um, it is going along with he, which is a, a form of, of the word meaning they. So the, the modern English they comes probably from um, an Old Norse word. The, in the Old English period, we'd had uh, this, this he form or he. Um, depending on, on dialect and source and interpretation of how it's pronounced. But uh, we have this construction, sumehi, which literally is some they, some they, but, you know, we can translate this a bit better as some of them. Um, so, sumehi, what did sumehi do? They fell on, they fell on, they fell. So this is uh, an irregular 
or this is a, a strong past tense here. But, oh, no, I got to scroll like this. Um, they fell on with way. Uh, with, ancestor of modern English with, but in Old English it has a bunch more different meanings. Um, among these are against or along. So with way means along the road. So as he's sowing, you can picture this farmer going out and sowing his seeds and some of them are falling along the road with way. Way, W-E-G, is uh, the ancestor of modern English way, W-A-Y. It's actually pronounced basically exactly the same although it looks a bit different. Okay. Anthotho heseu sumehi feulon with way. What happens next? What happens next? Indeed. And fulas kumon and aton tho. Oh dear. And birds came and ate them. Fulas, birds. This is um this is related or the source of the modern English fowl, as in, um, as in the, you know, things like chickens, um, fowl. Uh, so, but in old English, more general word for bird. So fuglas, fuglas, this G is actually a, a fricative. Fu <laughs> I don't know if it'll come through with the mic. Fuglas, um, kumon. So, and birds came and aton thaw, and ate them. Um, kumon, aton, these are both um, past tense forms. Uh, past tense plural forms, you can tell by this on on the end. That's a nice, that's usually a, a gimme for these, uh, these past tense plurals. So, on fulos kum, uh, kumon and aton thaw, uh, and birds came and ate them. Oh, catching up on the chat here. Yeah, so you actually can hear uh, an old English conversation if you search on YouTube. Um, Simon Roper has uh, a great channel that he's got some videos like that. Um, and yes, this is a cognate of Vogel in German. Uh, in is the singular in Vogel in Old English, uh, plural Vogelas. Right. Okay, moving on. What's next? Ah, sodliche summe felon on stanichte, ther hit navde mutle erdan. Now some fell on stony places where it did not ha it did not have much earth. Uh, let's see if I can fit more of this on the screen. Precision zoom. Yes, let's do it. Precision scroll, I guess would be the right word. Um, Okay, sodliche sume feulon. Okay, these are not new to us now. Uh, indeed, or now, some fell on on stanichte. Stanichte. Um, this is a variant form of what you'll find in the, the dictionary as stanicht, um, which is here. When, By the way, when I say variant form, there wasn't necessarily a one standard form for all of these words, but I'm giving you the things that if you go up and look on Wiktionary, which by the way is a great resource for this kind of thing, this is the entry you'll find it under. Um, sometimes it's not always obvious. So, Stanicht, um, obviously related to the word Stan, which is stone, which gives us stone in modern English. Um, so, it fell on stony, on stony what? on stony ones, on stony things, stony places. Sodliche sume felon on stanichte. And then what about the stanichte? Ther uh, hit navde michle erdan. Where uh, it navde, navde, navde. This is actually a word that's composed of two words. Ne havde, not had. So Old English has all of these great um, contracted forms uh, where you get the, the negative marker and the verb going together into one. So navde, um, didn't have. Incidentally, there are other verbs that work like this. Um, one is uh, ne willan, not to want. So you have the verb nillan, to not want. And we actually have a little a little bit of survival of this in the English phrase, modern English phrase, willy-nilly, uh, which comes from will ye nil ye, whether you want it or not. Um, 
So that's cool. And maybe it will help you remember about this whole negative contraction thing. That's my kind of MO with bringing up all these sort of somewhat irrelevant side notes. It's like another link for these things to, to embed themselves in your web of, of, of memories. Um, all right, so, ne havde navde. Thar hit navde michle erdan. Um, where it had, where it did not have michle erdan, much earth, where it did not have much earth. So, um, michle and erdan, these are the ancestors of, of our words much earth. Um, so, that hopefully should be relatively straightforward. They are appearing in the accusative case. I don't really want you to worry too much about all these endings right now. Um, my goal is that eventually with enough of, of with enough reading, you'll begin to get a sense of which endings appear where and why. Um, I think it's it's not super fun to go study those charts. Oh, they may, it might be fun for you. I don't know. Um, I haven't known a lot of people who like it, though. Yes, indeed. OK, moving on. What happens next? And hradliche up sprungon for them the he navdon erdan dupan. Okay. Uh, and, and, hradliche. Uh, hradliche uh, means promptly, immediately, at once, forthwith. Um, and at once, up sprungon, they sprang up. Uh, springan, obviously the ancestor of spring, um, the verb to spring, but we can translate it as leap or burst forth. Um, you know, you can think of a uh, a plant as, as sort of bursting out of the ground, springing up. For uh, thamde, for thamde, this is because we've seen this before. Uh, no, we haven't seen this before. This is the first time. Here it is, all written out nicely, uh, because. For thom the he navdon erdan dipan. Dipan. It's a long u. Um, okay, what's going on here? We need a little bit more on the screen, I think. Uh, because he, the seeds, they, navdon, this is the plural form uh, that we saw earlier uh, uh, as navde. So navdon erdan dipan. They did not have depth of earth. Um, yeah, so the, the earth wasn't deep there, so um, they sprang up right away. Um, very good. But what's going to happen next? We're going to have a we're going to have a twist. Sodliche up sprungen re sunnan, hi adruedon and forshrunkon. Uh, and let's translate this as, then, the sun having sprung up, they dried up and withered. So, oh no, not good. Um, this is a really interesting construction here. And this is the first time we're seeing, we've seen this in our series so far. Sodliche, up. This is not the interesting part. We know this stuff already. Indeed, up, or then, up. Sprungenre sunnan. What is this sprungenre sunnan? This is what is called a, an absolute construction. And if you've taken Latin, you will have come across the ablative absolute. Uh, in Old English, we have the dative absolute. It's just a different case being used uh, to mark it. What is an absolute construction? Uh, you, we have these in modern English too. You can say things like, that being said, or these things having been done, I will do whatever. Um, the weather having changed, we went inside. So this X having Y, X having Y, this kind of construction is called an absolute construction. And in Old English, you mark it with a, um, usually a noun and a participle, um, and they're both put into the dative. So sprungenre, sprungenre sunnan is just such a construction. So sp Sprungen, sprungen here is the past participle of um, of springen, which we've already seen. So the sun having sprung up, so the sun having 
risen. Uh, what happened? He adruedon and forshrunkon. All right, let's go a bit down. We can see the, the notes here. Adruedon, um, dried up. Forshrunkon, withered. So the sun having sprung up, they dried up and withered. Why did they dry up and wither? Oh, oh, oh before I go on to that, um, here's another another spot where the uh, the form you find in a text won't always be the form that you find in the dictionary, or at least the form, the head word in the dictionary. So here's what you would look up. Adrian. Um, Adrian, actually, I should say, um, to dry up. So that's where that's where you go looking for this. If you go into the dictionary and you try and find adruedon, you're not going to find anything. You have to sort of work back to what the dictionary considered to be the form to record as the head word. Real life isn't like the textbook, Junior. As, uh, as my uh, middle school teacher told me, that never happened. That's a lie. It's just... It's just a lie. Uh, for for shrunkon, nothing too uh, interesting going on here. Uh, for for shrinkan, to shrink up, to wither, like that. Um, right. Okay. Then why did this happen? For thom the he navdon virtruman. Because they did not have roots. No roots. For thom the, okay, we've had this before. Because he they. Navdon did not have um, roots. So this is not a word that survives into modern English. However, this wirt, meaning plant, um, you may have heard of St. John's wort, um, W-O-R-T. This is, this is that root. <laughs> it's the root of the word, and it's also literally meaning a root. I didn't mean for that to, to be uh, a pun, but there you go. Moving down, moving down. Sodliche uh, summe, sodliche summe feulon on thornas. Sodliche summe. Here I've translated this as some. However, you have a lot of latitude with sodliche. Sodliche um, summe feulon on thornas. So the new word here uh, is thornas, but that shouldn't be too complicated to figure out what that means. Some, however, fell on thorns. And the thornas weoxon, and here's that word again, for thrismodon tha. And the thorns, tha thornas, weoxon, grew. Um, this is the past tense of uh, weaxan, or ye weaxan, uh, to grow. This is, by the way, you may have heard wax, the, like the moon waxes and wanes. You know, the moon grows and and shrinks. So we don't use wax too much in present day English, but um, you, you do hear it from time to time. Um, it has a kind of archaic flavor. You might read it in some fantasy novels. Uh, but here it just means grew. So thathornas weoxon and forthrysmodon tha. Forthrysmodon choked. Um, yeah, and choked them, thaw them. Hydration break, excuse me. Okay. Sume sodliche fellon on gode eurdan and seldon wastum. Some, however, fell onto good earth and gave fruit. There's some interesting things going on here. So summe sodliche fellon, old news, on gode erdan, on good earth. Uh, on to good earth, actually. Um, and seldon uh, wastum. Um, and gave fruit. So this is an interesting one. Seldon is the past form of sellan. And sellan is the same word uh, ultimately, ultimately that we have in modern English as sell. But at the time, sell, as in give something away in exchange for money, uh, was not the primary meaning. 
The primary meaning was just to give or even to betray, as in to sell out, to sell someone out. So when we say something sell on wastum, it gave fruit, it didn't sell fruit. Um, so that's one where the meaning has, has um, become more specific in, in modern English. And wastum, wastum is fruit. Uh, and this is, again, something that does not survive, but it is related to this word waxan. Um, and it's almost a shame that it, nothing survives because it's kind of a cool, cool word. Um, wastum. Um, I'm going to just go scroll a little bit up here to um, to answer a question. I always look at the wrong screen. Uh, for for thrismodon, yeah. So there is a a. This is morphologically complex. You have this uh, for prefix, and uh, actually, this should say for for thrisman, um, and. For I'll have to edit that later. Um, if I recall correctly, well, I don't want to say what the prefixless uh, word is because I don't remember. I don't want to promote things that I don't, I'm not very sure of on the internet. Um, all right. So then let's, let's finish this off. And we have one, uh, one remaining sort of clause here. Um, sum, oh, it's not really a clause. Sum hundfeldne, sum sixtyfeldne, sum thrittyfeldne. So this is essentially, how do I get this on, on the screen? Um, so, then they gave fruit. Sum hundfeldne, sum a hundredfold, sum sixtyfeldne, sum sixtyfold, and sum thrittyfeldne, uh, uh, thirtyfold. <laughs> You can excuse lie. <laughs> okay. Uh, so that is the line by line breakdown. And let's go back up and see when I read this again, now that we've gone through and spent time uh, on each little, on each little bit, let's see if it actually, if it's, if it's unlocked for you, hopefully it will be. Uh, so I'm going to zoom up. Wait, you can see the nice art first. I found all these artistic depictions of St. Matthew. Um, always nice, cool public domain stuff. All right, so let's go back to the, the full text. Sovrice ut eude se sawere, he said to sawene. On tho tho he seu, sume he felon with way, on fulas cumon, on at on tho. Sodlice sume fellon on stanichte, thar hit navde michle erdan, and radlice upsprungon, for thom the hi navdon erdan dupan. Sodlice upsprungen re sunnan, hi adruedon an for shrunkon, for thom the hi navdon virtruman. Sodlice sume fellon on thornas, and tha thornas weoxon and for thrismodon tha. Summe sodlice feulon on gode erdan, and seldon wastum. Sum hundfeldne, sum sixtyfeldne, sum thrittyfeldne. What do you think? Any easier? Did you, did you catch, uh, did you catch the, uh, the meaning this time? Let me know, let me know in the comments, let me know in the chat, wherever you are. Um, and then I think we will change gears. So I will thank all of you who are joining in uh, on YouTube. If you've watched all the way this far, you clearly have uh, dedication to Old English. And I would recommend that you subscribe because you'll see more of it if, uh, if you do.